Hey everyone, Sergey here from EucreMedia.com, and today we are releasing a new After Effects script called Smart Sizer. Now, if you tuned in yesterday, you, you saw me talk about another script called Pixel Sizer. Well, it's the same thing. I just decided to change the name, and now it's called Smart Sizer because, you know, we have products like Smart Rect, Smart Lower Third, and it makes sense to keep it within the branding or the marketing family, so we decided to give it a name Smart Sizer. So I apologize for the confusion. And as I mentioned it yesterday, I want everyone to have this tool. So we're making it available to everyone by dropping the price to two bucks and up. So it's gonna be name your price kind of deal. So if all you can afford is two bucks, go nuts. And if you can afford more, feel free to do so. We love your support. Thank you guys for supporting us. Because of people like you, we get to do this. And by we, I mean my twin brother and I get to own a company to create awesome content that you guys can enjoy. So thank you for your support, but let me show you what the script does. So here's what it looks like. It looks the same as it did yesterday. And uh, let me kind of show you a quick practical example of how useful this can be. And then I'll go into more detail about each button, what, what they do and stuff like that. So for example, we have a vector logo right here. We have a text, another text and a shape. Now we've all dealt with this. I've worked for a creative agency and I had to do stuff like this all the time. So let's say, I have all of these selected and what if I wanted to size all of these to the longest text on the width? How can I make that happen quickly? Now, I don't want to be doing this and uh, you know, we've done this before. It just takes way too long and uh, yeah, you don't want to be doing that. And if things change, it, you constantly have to adjust, but watch this, watch what this script can do. So I'm going to select all of this and I want to grab the longest width and apply that width size to everything else. And to do that, I'm just gonna go over here. We have these buttons, and then we have the size, the width and the height, and then these two are margins. So width margin and then height margin. So for the size on the width, right, we want it to be basically to grab the longest or the biggest width out of everything selected. So make sure you have everything selected, then go over here. You can either type max, it's a keyword, but if you don't remember keywords, you can just click on this button and you have all of these awesome, useful like options that you can choose from. So you have layer width, which will go with whatever you have selected, the current layer. Then composition width has to do with the composition size. First, uh, first one selected. So whatever you select first, if you click on it, then it's gonna grab the size of that first selected width and apply it to everything else. Then you can go over here and maybe go to the last one selected, smallest one selected whatever, in this case would be this one right here. And then we have largest one selected. So I can click on the largest one for the width. I'm gonna ignore the height, but we have the same options for the height. And then I'm gonna use these two buttons for right now, well, this one. And basically what this one does, it only applies it on the width, it kind of ignores the height. So it's gonna always stay, you know, keep everything uh, the same size to the width. So if I select my, my layers and click on this, watch what happens. As you can see, it sizes everything to the longest or the, to the max, right? The longest selected layer, which is really useful. And then you can alter things on the fly like this, uh, very handy, but that's not all. The cool thing about this script is, is that it's not only like sizes it to that, but it also locks it in. So if I were to change this text, it will keep within the width of whatever you have selected. So it's not gonna go higher than whatever you know you determined when you first clicked on it. But you can expand on it, so you can click on, let me undo this. You can click on this, you can adjust the width, right? The height, notice they're in pixel, so that's useful. And basically, essentially what this script does, like on the very core level, it converts the scale property of your layers to a pixel value, the width and the height in pixel, which is really useful for a lot of reasons. I'm sure a lot of you watching this, you can think of ways you can use this. So in this case, as you can see, all of them have the same pixel value, right? The same width. And so first it converted to pixel value and then it made it all the same. But the cool thing about these, you can select this text or any of them, you have more options, right? Let's do this one. And you can maintain the same width, but then you can alter the margin, the X margin, the Y margin, so you can pull on it. It still has the same width, but then we're subtracting, right? Like 100 pixels. And again, you can change the text and it will not go further than whatever you determine here. Really, really useful. Let me undo this. Now you can do it that way one by one. Uh, I mean, you can do it that way, definitely useful. But um, 
like that, right? But you can also do this. Let me undo all of this. And you can select only the text and maybe this logo. And I'm going to go back to Smart Sizer. And I'm going to tell it to apply like a 50 pixel margin to everything that I have selected. And in my case, it would be these two and the logo. So when I do the same thing again, notice this time it applies margin right here to all of them. Very useful. And again, you can keep going. You can add more. So yeah, that's super handy. Now let me undo all of this and uh, show you more of these buttons. So again, these buttons activate, each button activates a script. And again, this one just fits it to the, you know, to the width only. That one fits it to the height. So we have that one determined. For example, I'm going to show you the height. So I'm going to reset this. And for the height, I'm going to say pick the smallest one, right? So everything should adjust to whatever the, the smallest height. So I could say height, and then obviously everything scaled to the smallest one. So you get the idea. It's the same concept, just has to do with the height. Now then I have two of these. And these are, it was kind of hard to label it, but what it is essentially, it sets a limit. It kind of does the same thing, right? It sets the limit to the width, but it doesn't snap it. It basically says, don't go longer than whatever limit we determine. So for example, I'm going to reset this. And by the way, if it's set to zero and you run it, let's say this stretch, it will basically, well, it'll apply it to one. I'll go over here in a second. Make sure you clear out the margin. All right, so this one right here. So that one, again, it just limits the width. So I can select all of these and I can say again, let's do the largest selected layer, which in this case would be this one, right? And then I can say, run it, you know, limit it to the width. And obviously when I do that, not much happens. And you're like, hey, it didn't work, but it did. Here's why. Because what it does, it sets a limit. So if I add anything to this, you can see it will not go past that point. It will start scaling down. So that's what it means. It still did it, but it didn't snap it. It will just kind of, you know, keep it at that. And the same thing for shapes or images, whatever you have, um, you can adjust height all day long, but as soon as it goes, you know, hits that limit, it won't let you go past that limit. So I just want to make sure you understand this one. This one just sets a limit on the width and that one does the same thing on the height. So I know it's kind of confusing, but trust me, it, it's, it's not. It just basically sets a limit. It's the same concept. This one just applies it to width and it stays like that forever. Now, that one right here, what it does, let me do this. Let me undo all of these. And uh, what this one does, if you click on it, if you set it to zero, which zero and uh, layer width, it's the same thing. So if I run this, again, it takes this scale property and it converts it to pixel size. But this one applies it to both width and height. So if these buttons that you see in here are the same as you see in here. So after you create run this script, you can continue adjusting these in here, right? You can say fit to width or height, whatever. And uh, so it's very easy. And uh, after you run this, as you can see, I clicked it to like, this was going to stretch to both width and height. So now I can alter these easily, right? I can add margin and uh, stuff like that. So that's what that one does. It basically applies it to both. It's like, I think of it like a stretch. It stretches it to both, but yeah. But if you have it set to zero, it's just gonna apply it and it's gonna maintain uh, the same shape, but then you can push it further. So let me do one more. Let me talk about anchors real quick. So let's do this. Let's stretch it, right? We're gonna fit it to max on the, okay, let's do largest and then fit it to width. So it's gonna take it, okay, like that, that's good. Then we have, you know, each one after you run it, we have anchor point options. So for example, if I type something in here, let's say, okay, something like that. Even though my anchor point was set at the bottom, you can see that it, it ignores the J's and the G's. And that can be complicated, you know, especially if you're creating templates, it just offsets things and it, it can be annoying. So what I did, I applied, let's select this text to anchor point, you have an expression applied. So when you go to, you know, you can leave it as l l like a layer anchor point and it will just hold on to whatever you have. You can manually move around the anchor point, and it's fine. But you can set it to something like bottom center. And when you do that, then it applies an expression and it's really, really smart. And it's gonna always be at the bottom center. It doesn't matter what you type, it's always gonna be there. Now that's very useful because you can type anything you want. You can me.com slash smart, is it? 
smart sizer. <laughs> That's what it is. And as you can see, it will always stay at the bottom center. That is useful when you create templates because then you can say for this one, hey, make sure you always stay at the top center like this. Then we can do something with this. We can determine, let's pull this up then the gap between the two will always be the same. So it doesn't matter what I do to these. I can uh, size this down, right? I can push up on this like that, right? It doesn't matter what I do. The, the width between the two will always be the same. If I increase this, it will always have the same gap. So again, that's more of a like advanced option, but you can adjust anchor points and lock them in. It, and you're not just set to bottom center. You can say the same thing for like the maybe... Let's do something like top or center left, right? It's going to be to the center left. So very useful. I wish I had this tool when I, I was working at the creative agency. I would have been much faster. And again, you can type things in here and adjust to things. You know, you can sky is the limit where you can do with these. You can see how useful this can be just for editing and uh, any kind of changes. And we all know in the agency world, we have a lot of changes and this thing would have been awesome. So that's one example. Let me show you another one. So you might be wondering like, Sergey, that's great, but what if we have text animation and how can we use those anchors? Well, let me show you. So if I run this, let's go over here, let's clear all of this. I'm just gonna run, let's do fit to width. It's not gonna go, right? It's not gonna go longer than whatever the initial width was, right? Something like that is good. So notice, Anchor points, if I set this to center, it will always be the center, right? But but then it's by default, but then you can go and have more options. So you can go to this size that uh, basically has to do with uh, anchor point. And in here, you can adjust things. You can say, hey, give me the anchor point based on, let's do in point. So wherever it was, it initially started out. So then it will be there and then it will move Right? It will not be in the final one. So you have more options in here, maybe like middle point of the layer. So whatever the size is, it's going to determine the, the, uh, the center of that. So that's more of like an advanced option. So you can say custom and you can type your own time. So that's good. And then you can say layer based on layer time or composition time. So those are more of a like advanced stuff, but it has to do, I just want to show you that it has to do with text animation. So if you want to play with that, uh, that's great. And uh, so that's, Second example, let's go to the third one. So we have this, this one is, you know, well, let me go back to this one for a second. <laughs> let me keep going. I know I'm all over the place. Let's do middle point. And let me show you what else you could do. Let me center this text. The reason why it's so awesome that it takes the scale property of any layers, right? And converts it into pixel value because then you can bring in like a shape layer and uh, you know, you can go to scale property, like the size property, right? And then uh, the size property is actually in pixels, which is really, really handy. So in here, you know, let's, the anchor point is, cent is centered. So it doesn't matter what I type in here. If I have G's and J's, it will always be in the center. Really, really useful. If you know what I'm talking about, if you've dealt with this, you're appreciating this right now, I guarantee you. So watch this. So I can say, hey, since we already know the width and the height of this text, I can just, the same stuff that I see in here, if I press E, I can E on the keyboard. I can select these, press S twice to solo it. And then I can say, hey, the width of this text, be the width of this shape. And then for the height, be the height. And uh, obviously it's set to, to where it keeps like a proportional s size. Now I, right here we have, you know, it, it preserves the aspect ratio, but if you set it to uh, fit to width, then it's gonna stretch it. So if you, move the size of your shape, it will adjust. So that's really cool. I mean, but obviously you don't want to stretch it. So you, you would say something like you want to preserve it. You just limit it to width or maybe height. Well, that didn't work. Hold on. Let's do that fit to width. Okay, that's probably good. And it maintains it. Uh, let's, I'm going to stretch it for this example. I'm just going to stretch it. Let's, let's stretch it all the way. And again, we have margins, you can adjust margins. You can do all these things in here. Very useful, whatever you type in here will adjust. So that's that. And the last one, I just wanna show you that you can use this smart sizer with SmartRect easily. So for example, you can, 
again, select this, run it. Let's make it to where it's, you can stretch it, right? And then let's determine our anchor point to the center. Let's center this. And uh, then I can run a smart rect. I can create a smart rect based on my selection. So in here I can say, hey, let's add margin like uh, to the top and the bottom. Let's do like 30 pixels. And to each side, let's do like 50, something like that. That's good. And then I'm going to determine the anchor point, maybe like a center left. And but before I do that, let me undo this. I'm going to make sure that it applies a mask and it's auto sizable. So now you can see that I can do something with this shape. I can select this and, uh, you know, animate this thing and whatever I type in my text, right? It will always work, but something didn't work. There you go. You want to make sure. And uh, so it doesn't matter what you type, it's going to maintain that shape. So anyway, it's a perfect tool for SmartRact as well. But again, I hope you see the value of this tool. I mean, it definitely can help you save lots of hours. And it, it's very dynamic. It's kind of fun to design things when you can quickly adjust things and size them to all the selected layers. So I hope you find it useful. If you think it's a tool that you'll enjoy, definitely check it out at ukrami.com slash SmartSizer. Again, we're trying something new. It's a, it's a name your price kind of deal, so you can get it for as low as $2. So definitely check it out. And uh, thank you again for your support. But until next time, my name is Sergey Proknevsky, and this is ukramedia.com.